supporting YouTube pipe community, Smarty Bob here in central Indiana. Where it's cloudy, temperature 60 degrees, wind is out of the south at 11 mile an hour. Today I'm smoking my Savinelli 320. It's the Roma Lucite and it's made in Italy. And in it, I'm smoking some Daughters of Ryan's Wind Sail Platinum. Pretty good tobacco. I want to talk to you. First of all, this is another back in the day. I want to talk to you how the poor people, very poor people, heated their houses back in the 40s and 50s. We lived in a small house, relatively small for that time. Originally, it only had about four rooms. Uh, actually, it only had three rooms at first, and then Dad added on a back porch that we poured, and uh, he went on ahead and uh, framed it in to become another room. But the center of our house was... Uh, and this rain off! Yep. Yeah, they're building a house next door and they're uh, trying to get some brick laid and it's threatening rain. So uh, these old poor people's houses back in the day, they did not have fireplaces that a lot of people, or most of them didn't have fireplaces that a lot of people thought, gee, why wouldn't you have a fireplace? That would be a cheap way to heat your house. The fact is that when you build a fireplace, first of all, you usually put it on a wall, and which makes it uh, contained to one area. Second of all, you've got to have a damper on it, so you build up your uh, fire in there with wood or coal. And as long as the fire is burning, it is radiating some heat out into the room. Of course, the closer to the fire you are, the warmer you are. But 90% plus of that fire that you built, heat is going out the flue, going right up the chimney. You're really wasting a lot. So if you got to go out and chop wood or buy wood or buy coal, or walk along the railroad tracks and pick up the coal that fell off the coal uh, cars as they went by on the trains that we did. They didn't want a fireplace to lose all that heat. So they came up with these metal pot belly stoves and they could place them in the center of the room and the radiant heat from the pot belly would go out into the room. The metal would heat up and the metal was hot. I've seen these pot belly stoves uh, down to the base where the fire is red hot. And that heat would radiate out into the room and actually heat your whole house if you kept the doors open and had a smaller house. First picture I'm gonna show you today is the pot belly stove that sat in the middle of that four room house that I lived in when I was very young. And as you can see, they were metal. It had a flue. A lot of times the pot belly stove would sit in the middle of the room and they would run the ductwork up and it would be six or eight feet across to the wall and go on up. They didn't usually go right straight up. So, uh, and then they realized at that time that flu that went out and went across there, that heat, that smoke would go up and actually heat that metal ductwork. And that also would generate heat into the room. This was a common uh, way to to not only heat homes, but businesses and grocery stores and the pharmacies. The second picture I'm gonna show you of a pot belly stove that's actually in a store. 
they're heating the store with the pot belly stove. Now, when we started running this duct work uh, and heating it up, we realized that, gee, we could uh, pipe some of this heat places. Back in the day, if you had a single room or a single story house, it was kind of simple, just radiant heat. But then there were two story homes and how do you get the heat up to the top story? Well, it was simple. They would just cut a hole in the floor, put a grate over it or a grill and let the heat rise up into the upper rooms. And that actually worked very well because heat rises and the heat would just go up there. Then as they started to refine add bigger, build bigger homes, uh, add more rooms. They had to get this heat into these other rooms. Therefore, they had a, a series of duct work that would take this heat in the other rooms. And now they had to find a way to get this heat in there. So they added a fan. The third picture is gonna be a refined pot belly stove with the duct work very similar to my grandfather's pop belly refined stove that he had down in his basement. A lot of duct work going everywhere. It's got longer and longer and the house has got bigger and bigger. They needed to put a blower on this and they put this duct work, of course you see it right along the side of the stove, the, the furnace they called it then and that would heat that heat would come out the blower would come on and it would blow that heat up into the rooms of the house and we've actually kept that same philosophy today so the next picture you're going to see is an older stove with all that duct work the, fixed pic, the fifth picture you're going to see is a modern furnace we have today. As a matter of fact, somewhere along here, I'm actually going to show you a picture of the furnace I have in my house today. And uh, this house was built uh, in uh, 2015, so it's about seven years old now, going on eight. And uh, although <laughs> to me that's new, but to some people, that furnace is getting some age on it. And our furnaces don't last as long as they should. You'll notice that these furnaces are still big. Some of them take up a four feet by four feet or five feet by five feet. And, and they are take up eight. By the time you get the furnace on there and the blower and, the, and all the stuff on it, it takes eight, nine feet to put these furnaces in and they got all kinds of duct work and stuff on them. My rant today is, why haven't we improved these furnaces? We're basically using the same furnace that we did in the 1960s. It's got a blower unit on it. And why are we making these blowers these big squirrel cage blowers that are like two feet by two feet or two and a half by two and a half when we know we got the technology to make very small blowers the dyson sweeper company was one of the first uh, companies to uh, make very small blower units and they replaced the big old cumbersome vacuum with a very little small hand carried battery powered vacuums that have all the suction power of the old Kirby's years ago. Why aren't we applying that technology to our furnaces today? I'll show you a picture of a modern furnace that's very small, very slim, mounts on the wall. Would uh, I would call it an area furnace in my house that's pretty large, but it's an open concept house you would have two of these. You would have one in the kitchen, living room, dining room, open area, and then you'd have one back in your bedrooms areas. And uh, 
So you could have two of these really small furnaces, wouldn't have to have all that duct work and take up all that space. Also, you would have the ability to heat one area and not necessarily the other area. We have that ability now. We can turn open our vents or close our vents and keep one area part of the house cooler than others. But most people set their thermostat on 72, 74, 70, whatever they want it, and their whole house is heated the same way. So America needs to kind of wake up and uh, invent a modern furnace that takes very little space. I could invent a furnace, I know I could, I could have the ideas of one, somebody else would have to do it. But I could have been a furnace that would go up in my attic. Got a big, huge attic up here. I almost got another house up there. And uh, I could put a little small furnace in there that would heat the whole house economically, wouldn't weigh a lot of weight, wouldn't take up a lot of space. And uh, boy, it's time for America to uh, start really modernizing its homes. Well, that's just an old man's opinion. My opinion is worth just what you pay for it. <laughs> and I hope you got something out of this video. I want to remind you that yesterday was just a memory. Tomorrow's a promise. You go enjoy your pipe. No. <laughs> I'm really trying this.